second big change is going to how, how we interface with technology. And look, the message here is what if our interactions could be entirely natural? Whether we could almost forget that this was actually some kind of technological artifact. <coughs> and what's really going to drive this, of course, is voice. You, many of you already have a smart speaker in your house. You've already noticed the way your kids interact with it, right? So as your kids grow up, this will be totally normal for them. We will also start to see our bodies as interfaces. And this is, of course, starting to happen with our faces. I'm sure many of you have an iPhone X or one of these brand new, hideously expensive phones. Uh, despite it being so expensive, I don't know whether you found this, but my phone just doesn't like me in the morning. Like, it literally refuses to open <laughs> until I've had three cups of coffee. Apple's just basically saying, you're, I don't like your face. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if, if we're struggling with this in the West, believe me, in places like Asia and China, facial recognition has already become part of the infrastructure of daily life. Uh, in apps like Didi Chao Xing, it, it's used by drivers to authenticate themselves. Uh, the police have augmented reality glasses connected to a database of 600 million photos. They can scan a group like this and see exactly who hasn't been paying their taxes on time. They've even installed it in toilets. Uh, this is weird. This is the Temple of Heaven in Beijing. If, if you've ever been irritated by those paper dispensers that give you one sheet at a time, you're going to love these ones in Beijing. They scan your face. And when you've taken enough paper, they just cut you off. <laughs> I mean, th that's not going to lead to some sort of disaster, I, I, I don't know. But, I'm bringing this up because I think China, much more than Silicon Valley, is where the future of digital is going to play out first. China will be the first post-cash, post-credit card society because everyone in that country uses Weixin uh, or WeChat, which is like an operating system for daily life. The largest money market fund in the world, Yue Bao, runs on these platforms. <laughs>